First of all, we are really very grateful for each of you for joining us to the seventh Global Baku Forum hosted by the Nizami Ganjam International Center. It means a lot to have each of you and your support to, to our mission and to our institution. And uh, especially, we would like, from, on behalf of the Secretariat, to thank our Board of Trustees members who supported us each our step and invitations, calling, reaching each of you, making sure that we have a successful event. But as well as I would like to call for my colleagues in the Secretariat, a very small team, that uh, I think that we can applaud them. Ilaha, Supan, Reza, Narmin, Emil, Torul, Asim, Arzufanam, and everyone for, for the amazing jobs these young people did and to the volunteers. And for the opening speech, I would like to ask my dear Madam President, Co-Chair Vajravika Freiberger. Good evening. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of Nizami Ganjavi. I think as the Baku Global Forum, the seventh in turn, is drawing to a close, I can say that it has been an unqualified success. And, <laughs> and of course, there are many reasons for it, um, but I'll start out with your presence here. I'd like to thank you on behalf of all the board members and the staff for your willingness to share your insights, your wisdom, your life experience, your convictions, your passion with all of us here. The interchange between you has been lively, sparkling, uh, sometimes uh, quite emotional, but that is as it should be, because you're all people with ideas, with loyalties, with convictions, and strong emotions about the things that you hold dear. But I think the most impressive and for me, the most wonderful thing about the Baku Forum is that the atmosphere in which we talk to each other has remained throughout all these years, and certainly was this year, one of openness, of readiness for dialogue, of respect for the views of the other, and not just tolerance, but acceptance of those who are different. I know that, and thank you for that to all of you. Thank you, truly. In that, I think this audience is an example to the world. And that is precisely the reason why such fora as the Baku Forum are necessary. Azerbaijan and its capital, Baku, offers an unusual place uh, for meeting. Think back to 1991, when the former Soviet Union was just dissolving under our eyes. Countries like Azerbaijan came on the world stage from which they had been brutally kept away under the forceful umbrella of the Soviet Union. Just like my country, Latvia, which had been uh, occupied some decades later, but nonetheless, since the Second World War, was under that same imposed umbrella. I would have never been able to get acquainted with Azerbaijan or come to Baku unless the Soviet Union had collapsed. And I think for most of you, it would have been the same. And do, do let's agree that it's a wonderful thing that this country was born, and others were born and reborn, and that so many were able to gain their freedom. But today, all is not rosy, all is not perfect. The world has many ills and ails in many ways. We heard uh, during our debates about many serious menaces, 
hovering over our heads, starting with the danger of destroying our planet, uh, going on with serious dangers of armed conflict, and then the internal instabilities, the injustices, uh, the wrongs that happen in big countries and small, the kinds that we saw in the Robert F. Kennedy evening about speak truth to power. The world is full of wrongs that need to be righted. And people of goodwill, such as you, members of this evening and participants in this conference, people of goodwill are what makes a difference. I've been asked again and again by journalists here in Baku, what good is a conference such as this? And I didn't answer, what good is a baby, you know? I, I did try to explain that the ap atmosphere of openness, the meeting ground for minds from different parts of the world and of different convictions and of different baggages of knowledge is what makes this unique and uniquely valuable. Not to mention the fact that I think that for many of you it was an opportunity to discover Baku, to discover Azerbaijan, and as you go home, for you to bring back news of both this country and this city and the experience that you had here. People frequently think that gatherings such as this are, are useless. We're just talking. Even among our board, we sometimes had heard reproaches. You just talk, talk, talk. Where does it lead to? Well, we are not engaged in techne in the Aristotelian sense. We're not building bridges. We're not building skyscrapers. We're not even most of us decision makers, although men, some of us are. And uh, those, I hope, uh, will be inspired by uh, the thoughts and the ideas uh, that they heard here. Uh, but most of all, we are creating a space, a space of conviction. We talk about values, and many emphasize that the values should not be labeled as coming from here, there, or elsewhere, but as being human values, global values, fundamental values. Nobody would consider being tortured something that is acceptable, as Kerry pointed out to us. We have these things in common, and we must build everything else on that common ground. It's true that throughout human history, there have been times, long periods of history, when in many fields, the talk that people engaged with was rather empty. I'm thinking of the, one of the oldest universities in Europe, the Université de Montpellier, uh, where for several centuries, medicine consisted of trying to describe in what order the symptoms of the bubonic plague appeared in different patients and how they should be called by what sort of Latin name. And it took centuries, many centuries before the idea of the rat as a vector of disease uh, appeared, and it took even longer for the germ theory of disease to be accepted. But can we fairly say that the universities created in Europe were useless? No, even though some of them spent time in scholastic disputes about how many angels might uh, dance on the head of a pin, they were creating the tradition of civilized discourse and of interchange of ideas instead of slitting each other's throats or throwing each other in the fire, which they did as well, by the way. But this is why the universities were such an island of safety, relative safety, for those expressing various views. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's been, I think, a stupendous opportunity for us uh, to come together and to hear the latest opinions and the latest thoughts 
of what is happening in the world today. How we are going to go about solving it, well, that is a job for us and for the rest of the world. I hope that our ideas will contribute to it and that many among you will be among those who will be able to carry out feats and achievements that will change the world for the better. Thank you again for all being here. Now, with great honor, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Anna Birchel, Deputy Prime Minister of Romania. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Roshav. Your Excellencies, dear friends, uh, please allow me to express my gratitude for being with you uh, tonight. It's my second uh, time that I am participating to this amazing forum, which uh, uh, last year um, sent me home with uh, amazing lessons and recommendations that I'm trying to put in place uh, during my daily job. And the words are not strong enough to express my gratitude for all and each of you for uh, putting together such an amazing gathering uh, from uh, um, all parts of the world. And uh, allow me to share with you uh, the best wishes of the Prime Minister of Romania and uh, allow me to share with you uh, a short message on behalf of Romanian government and the Prime Minister. Um, for me, the presence in this uh, very beautiful city, in this amazing country, Azerbaijan, at a time where Romania and Azerbaijan are celebrating a special uh, year, is the 10th anniversary, anniversary of our strategic partnership. And imagine how joy and how much honor I have by sharing with you this uh, tonight and uh, during those past uh, days. Um, being in this, uh, being part of this um, uh, prestigious uh, forum, uh, who, uh, a forum that is a landmark now on the international scene, a prestigious event uh, which has developed over the years uh, into a global platform for discussing, assessing, and finding solutions to our common uh, challenges and uh, today challenges, which are not uh, short. You know, the list is quite long. This is the seventh year in a row that leaders, thinkers, and scholars have uh, converged to Baku to share their thoughts on tackling some of the most pressing issues on the global agenda. I would like to congratulate the organizer for choosing this year such a topical theme, the new foreign policy. And for young leaders, well, I'm not that young, I will be 46 this year, but for us, uh, drawing um, from the discussions that uh, were taking place during those past uh, days, it's, uh, it's a good foundation for the new foreign policy that represents for all, all of us a theme of uh, reflection. Wherever we like or like it or not, there is a growing perception of weakening of cooperative multilateral framework and on the functioning of the current international order. What we have been used to label as global governance has increasingly been put to the test by growing unpredictability, a new global phenomenon, which pr uh, pressures uh, for altering, modifying the international system uh, has become more persistent. One cannot deny that we need to adapt international institutions to be able to more effectively address a wide array of challenges, some old, some new. Successful leadership, nationally, regionally, or globally, should include managing the benefits and opportunities still brought about the globalization and turning them to the benefit of as many of our citizens as possible. Distrust, alienation, or failed integration of citizens in their communities and social institutions is one of the silent but most dangerous enemies of our stability and security both in Europe and globally. And um, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, in an increasingly challenging and multi-phase global context, the EU finds itself aims multiply interna internal challenges and external risk, as well as various types of pressures. In our view, we have, uh, reconciliated, we have to reconciliate Europe around its fundamental values make the EU most credible and promote the EU global leadership in a time of major uh, strategic realignments. This is fully in the letter on in the spirit of the EU global strategy from 2016, 
which continues to guide the Union's external action. And as the current presidency of the European Council, Romania, you know, is holding, as we speak, the presidency of the EU Council, Romania seeks the, to reinforce Europe's attachment to multilateral and international law as a prerequisite for acti effectively addressing all the new global challenges. We promote stronger cooperation within the United Nations while aiming to improve EU coordination in international organizations. Multilateral cooperation is the backbone of the EU foreign policy. Advancing multilateralism be, begins by supporting the UN through our several avenues. More substance for the EU-UN institution, institutional relationship is needed, especially in areas that respond to global needs, such as, for instance, fostering resilience to natural disasters or efforts aimed at maintaining peace. Advancing multilateralism also means responding to current global trends in international cooperation for development based on key UN principles. And Romania presidency, my country's presidency uh, to the uh, European Council, will ensure active support in promoting sustainable development more on the EU agenda, which is consistent investment in Europe's stability in the long run. And, uh, Romania intends to increase its visibility and better explore economic and other opportunities in political dialogue with the countries of Caucasus and Central Asia, Asia, EU, Southern Neighborhood, Middle East, Latin America, and the Caribbean. And our aspirations and uh, candidature for the membership of the UN Security Council with election in 2019. And please keep the fingers crossed because I think given the chance, Romania will do an amazing job. We must be seen in light of all the above. Our plea speaks about our beliefs as proven by Romanians' approach towards a principled, up, uh, updated multilateral for the for 21st century. And we already build a clear profile as defender of international system, unsured in international law, rules and universal principles, peace, stability, human rights, and efforts towards reducing global disparities. We also focus on our surrounding neighborhood. Our practical approach while holding the EU Council presidency implies equal attention to the Western Balkans, as I was sharing with you in our panel, and on the Eastern, uh, Eastern neighborhood, to which um, you know we are celebrating this year 10 years uh, of the Eastern Partnership, providing visibility for the 10th anniversary of this important um, partnership, the Eastern Partnership, not just for uh, uh, this part of the world, but actually for the whole world, while prom uh, prompting the Black Sea cooperation with concrete benefits in mind more on the EU agenda, and furthering political, economic, social, and cultural ties between the Union and its neighborhood countries to the East and South is fundamental for, we, for us. We seek to stimulate co uh, collaborative approaches in order to address challenges that affects us all, like uh, illegal migration or organized crime. And here at the crossroads of East and West, uh, Azerbaijan plays today an important role as a reliable and predictable regional player with an active foreign policy built on the principles of engagement, cooperation, and dialogue. And I strongly believe that Azerbaijan, with its traditions of fostering tolerance within a diverse society and in a very complex neighborhood, has important lessons to share with all of us. Our region, bordering from Black and Caspian Seas, needs much more positive experience. And those were the thoughts of the Prime Minister and uh, my colleagues from the government. And on a personal note, I can tell you that I had a, a, an amazing meeting with President Aliyev and, if, uh, and all the other colleagues from, uh, from um, uh, the ministries that we are cooperating so well. And I can tell you that if I am here today and taking pride that uh, we are celebrating 10 years of our special strategic partnership uh, and uh, the good work that we've been done in the last year is a lot of uh, uh, a lot of credit goes to president aliyev because since last year with uh, his personal uh, support and touch helped us to actually put a, a very good foundation for the future to go uh, i will close by again thanking you and um, the, the words are not strong enough to express my gratitude because you allow me in your family. You made me feel part of this amazing family. 
and uh, either speaking in the conference or on the hallways on uh, every single discussion I had, it was uh, a lesson for me to take home and why not to implement drawing from your experiences and your thoughts of the challenges that we have faced today. So thank you so much and I hope to see you uh, either in Bucharest because we are planning to have uh, an event with this amazing uh, organization in uh, Romania and uh, um, all of you to see you in good health and wishing you all the best to see you next year in Baku again. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for all your kind words to our institution, and definitely we will be more than happy to hold our next event in, April, in May in Romania with your support. Now, with your allowance, I would like to call Dr. Abdulaziz Altvaiji, Director General of the ISESCO. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I wish you a very pleasant evening and a very tasty dinner. But allow me first to extend my high appreciation and great uh, feelings of, of, of gratitude to the Nizami Ganjavi International Center for hosting and organizing this wonderful forum. It has been a success in all its aspects. Uh, I think uh, we have to give tribute to His Excellency, the President of Azerbaijan, Mr. Ilham Aliyev, who patronaged this uh, activity every year and, have, uh, and has made uh, this beautiful country a hub for all peace lovers, all those who seek to enter in very meaningful dialogue to spread peace, understanding, and coexistence between the nations and the peoples of the world. I also would like to thank Her Excellency, the co-chair, President Vaira Vaike Verbriga, and uh, my friend and dear brother, Dr. Ismail Sirajuddin, the co-chair of this beautiful uh, uh, center, and to Mr. Nazim Ibrahimov, and our friend and the dynamo of the work, Mr. Roshan Muradov and his team. They have really worked hard to make us reach this conclusion during the, their, the three past days and also before that, they spend a lot of time preparing for this event and putting their efforts uh, to make it a success. I thank their excellencies, the presidents, the prime ministers, the intellectuals, all the participants in this forum. It is a, a school for learning. Uh, I think it has made its place in the international uh, platform as one of the uh, respected and meaningful uh, forums that bring the high uh, personalities from all the corners of the world to discuss important issues for the future of humanity and for peace and uh, security and tranquility for the world. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me as Director General of ISESCO to uh, sign uh, a cooperation agreement with uh, Nizami Ganjavi International Center to organize the activities and the partnership between us and uh, allow me uh, to invite Her Excellency uh, President uh, Vaira Vaike Fabriga to come so we can sign this uh, uh, cooperation agreement which will open the door for very constructive and uh, beneficial work for not all all, uh, the two organizations, but to all those who participate in such a wonderful forum. Thank you very much and enjoy the evening.
Also, I would like to present to Her Excellency a Sesco Golden Emblem, the highest decoration given to the highest personalities, in recognition of the continuous cooperation between Sesco and the Nizami Ganjavi International Center for such a wonderful lady leader who made this event a great success. I am very proud of her personality, of her thoughts, and of her dedication for making this forum uh, a solid uh, base for world peace and understanding. Such leaders are needed nowadays in our world who is suffering from crazy people leading it to destructions and catastrophes. So please share me to applaud Her Excellency. I'm humbled by uh, this uh, attention and this honor that has been made to me, which I'm sure is meant for all my colleagues. And uh, I will certainly continue striving uh, to be uh, even more effective uh, in the future, as much as at my age one is capable of doing. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I would like to present a Cisco Golden Medal to Her Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister of Romania, the honorary member of this international center. Uh, I visited Romania two times, and I got fascinated by the beauty of the country and the hospitality of the people and the rich culture that I discovered in, in Romania. So it is a great honor for me also, in behalf of Cisco, to present to Her Excellency a Cisco Gold Medal a recognition of my love to her country and future cooperation, inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is, this is, and also. Thank you so much. You spoiled me. Thank you so much. It's a great honor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will treasure this. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. I'll see you in the Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, before we start for, for the dinner and to our amazing concert program, uh, as a last speaker, I would like to ask our co-chair, Dr. Ismail Sregeldin. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that there is really nothing left for me to say, but I must reflect on the fact that we are coming at the moment we bring these rich and fascinating discussions to a close. Even as we make an appointment to meet again a year from now here in Baku to carry forward the exchange of views, the building of bonds of mutual respect, and to nurture the many new friendships that are developing among those who are becoming veterans of these annual events, or better still, as uh, Deputy Prime Minister Mitchell said, uh, members of the family. Uh, looking back at the last few days and looking forward to the rest of this evening, I think that I would speak for everyone in expressing our profound thanks to His Excellency President Aliyev and the people of Azerbaijan for the wonderful hospitality and for having made us all feel welcome. Of course, the magic of the event is by the people who are present and who participate in it. And I believe that President Vaira Freiberga has really said it all on that. But I would just like to say to each and every one of you who have been participating here, thank you. 
But I would be remiss if I did not extend also our warmest thanks to Ravshan Muradov and all the staff of NGIC Secretariat who have worked day and night to make this event possible. And I ask you to join me in thanking them. And uh, it's a very small secretariat, as you know, and I must also reflect on the fact that the secretariat was able to mobilize and imprint with passion and excitement a group of volunteers who have worked so closely with them and that they've been so dedicated to meet our every need and anticipate our every request. For our volunteers who support our secretariat, let's welcome them. And uh, let us uh, also remember all the staff who have uh, dealt with us from the airport to the hotel. I hope uh, you know that behind everything that is uh, organized to perfection lies incredible amounts of work from all the staff members, and I'd like to thank them. And I would like to say that it's very appropriate that we should be coming to the close of this event with a celebration. So let us celebrate tonight with our thanks to everybody, and uh, we hope to see you next year here in Baku, and the formal part of the academic discussions is now closed. <laughs> Thank you.